Hello, I'm Dr. Lau, the Surgery Clerkship Director. Welcome to Stanford University's Operating Room Scrub Training. We are excited to introduce to you the OR environment so that you can begin exploring the world of surgery during your preclinical and clinical years at Stanford. The goal of this course is to provide you with and inform you of the proper surgical attire, operating room etiquette, and effective surgical hand hygiene practices prior to entry to the perioperative areas. Number one, to describe appropriate surgical attire for operating room personnel. Number two, to identify all personal protective equipment necessary for entry into the operating room suites. Number three, to demonstrate effectively and independently proper surgical hygiene, donning of a mask, gowning, and gloving. Number four, to describe and demonstrate your understanding of aseptic technique principles or sterile boundaries. This video will be followed by a brief online quiz, and then later you'll be required to attend an in-person session where you will perform these skills and have a practical assessment. It is important to be prepared at the start of the day. Comfortable, closed-toed shoes, preferably impermeable to liquids, should be worn at all times. All jewelry should be removed except for earrings that do not extend beyond the earlobe. Religious neck jewelry is respected, but if the religious article has any chance of contamination, it should be removed and replaced at the end of the day. The operating room is a scent-free zone. No scented or fragrant lotions can be worn, which includes the need for unscented deodorants. Patients and staff have sensitivities or medical conditions that warrant these precautions. Hair must be cleanly pulled back off of your face. For men, facial hair will be covered by the appropriate style head covering and mask. Fingernails should be kept short and all fingernail polish should be removed. All visible tattoos will also need to be covered and all additional external piercings removed. When you arrive at the hospital, proceed to the administrative third floor of the main hospital. There is a short stairwell as you enter the F building. Go ahead and walk up the stairs. Halfway down the hall, you'll make a right-hand turn down a short corridor. There you will find the unmarked door to the locker rooms. Flash your badge against the card reader and the red light should change to green, allowing you to enter. Standard scrub carts can be found in each locker room. Choose your appropriate size top and bottom. The scrub tops and bottoms are on different shelves by sizes, which are denoted by different colors on the scrubs themselves. Do not leave any valuables in the locker room and keep your phone and wallet in your pocket. Also, your identification badge should be worn above your waist, either on the collar of your scrub top or on the scrub top pocket so that it is clearly visible. Clip this on and let's head down to the OR. On your way down to the OR, don't forget to grab your scrub cap near the entrances to the operating room, which must be worn at all times. Okay, let's head downstairs. Now that we've made it down here, let's take a minute to orient you to the operating room. You can see the operating room board here, which lists the scheduled cases for the day by room, attending, and type of case. If you are not sure where the case is that you're looking for, take a look at this board or ask the scheduler at the OR front desk. They'll be happy to answer any questions you might have once you are down here. The operating rooms are laid out in three hallways. The first hallway has operating rooms one through five. The second hallway has operating rooms six through 15 plus operating room 21. The third hallway has operating rooms 16 through 20. Donning of the mask. Retrieve your mask from the cubicle where the mask is. You will find a fluid attached mask. There's a malleable portion that you place over your nose like so. Your upper ties will go onto the occipital portion of the crown of your head. No riding over your ears. Place the chin portion underneath your chin and underneath your hat on the posterior nape of your neck you will tie the lower tabs. If there's any foggy, you may continue to press the nasal piece. Now you are ready to go into the OR. 
Hi, my name is Sarah Miller. I'm a second year medical student. I'll be scrubbing in with Dr. Lau today. When you first walk into the OR, it is important to introduce yourself so that all of the OR personnel know who you are and why you are there. Give them your name, your year in school, and let them know what attending you will be scrubbing in with that day. If this is your first time in the OR, please share this with the operating room personnel. They will be sure to be extra helpful as they know you will have many questions. Board, please, that you're here. Now is also a good time to ask the circulating nurse if it is okay to pull your gown and gloves. He or she may rather do it for you, or if they say go ahead, you can head over to the cabinet where you'll see all of the sterile equipment. Go ahead and grab a gown and two Thank pairs you. of gloves and bring them over to the scrub tech table. The circulating nurse may ask you to write your name on a whiteboard in the room or they will record it themselves. They are required to keep track of every person that is in the operating room during the operation for patient safety purposes. A good rule of thumb regarding operating room behavior is to treat everyone the way you want to be treated with respect. Don't forget your manners. The words please and thank you go a long way. Also, when in doubt, ask. Now we're going to demonstrate the technique of envelope opening in order for you to be able to independently gown and glove yourself. Start with your sterile gown that is in this plastic package. Open it by removing the plastic cover and place it on a flat surface. Note, the plastic outer cover and the blue inner cover are not sterile. They are okay to touch with your bare hands. For the envelope opening, you will notice there's a tab here. Fold this first point away from you and then fold the left and right points to the sides. And finally, pull the last tab toward you. Note, the inside of the blue cover is sterile. You should only touch the periphery of the cover. If you notice the scoop at the neck of the gown is not facing you, turn it slightly clockwise and pull on the edges to flatten the packaging. Now you are going to place your two pairs of gloves on the sterile area. This is what we call flipping. Open the package a third of the way, being careful not to touch the inside of the package. Have one hand in front and your fist behind the clear side of the package and place it down into the sterile area. Your secondary glove is done the same way. Surgical hand hygiene, or otherwise known as the OR scrubbing. Retrieve your soap impregnated sponge from the soap dispenser. Open the, the package. You will find a soap impregnated sponge with a nail cleaner. There's a soft sponge and a bristle portion. Knee catch the water on. And clean your fingernails first with um, while the water is running. Each finger gets cleaned. Then throw away the nail cleaner, lather up your sponge, wet your arms all the way up to two inches above the elbows, lather up. We got where water can save us here. So we turn the water off and we start the up and down strokes of the hands hygiene. You'll notice I'm curling my sponge around each individual finger. It's 20 to 30 strokes. Up and down into the web spaces. We do the back of the hand and the palmer portion, which is the inside of the hand backwards and forward. You'll notice it's a circumferential prep going around on all sides. Move to the opposite hand, rotating the fingers, getting all up and down, up and down. If you're counting, it's 20 to 30 strokes again. If you're timing, it's a three to five total scrub. Up and down, up and down, the back of your hand, and the palmer portion of your hand. Moving upward, you do the distal portion of the forearm, which is your wrist area. 
Notice I'm circumferentially moving it around back and forth. Opposite side, same thing, 20 to 30 strokes, up and down, back and forth. Moving upward to two inches above the elbow. Opposite side again to two inches above the elbow. You'll use the bristle portion of your brush, fingertips. Hold your brush away from your mask so you don't aerolize the bubbles to your mask. It's a circle, and it's about 50 times if you're counting. Opposite, back and forth. Notice I have a cat-like arching of my body, so I'm not contaminating or touching any of my unsterile surfaces at the sink. 50 times. Then it's time to rinse. You'll knee gatch on your water again for rinsing. Toss your soap impregnated sponge in the receptacle close by. Knee gatch on the water does not have to be a vigorous water spray. And then very carefully, fingertips to elbows, rinse, keeping your elbow upright, fingertips to the elbow. Be gatch off your water and stand and present yourself. Entry into the OR suite, walk towards your door Turn your back, use your hip to against the paddle of the door. Enter, maintaining the arch like of your body and your hands away from your top. Now we are going to demonstrate towel technique. First thing you do is grab your towel, take a step back, unfold your towel and turn it lengthwise. Blot dry one hand completely and notice the towel is not making contact with any other part of your body or your scrubs. Pick up the unused side and blot the other hand dry. Do it one complete hand to elbow before switching. Then toss the towel off of the sterile field into a trash receptacle. With your dry hands, grab your gown by grasping underneath the scooped neck of the gown. Place your hands in the armholes and the gown will unfold itself in front of you. Put your hands into the gown, reaching out in front of you, not above your head, and your hands should not protrude through the white cuffs. Your circulator will then come in and tie you up. You have in front of you your two pairs of gloves. You will don your indicator glove first. Have your dominant hand facing the ceiling. Place the glove face down on your palm with the fingers pointed towards your chest. Notice the thumb side of the glove will be lying on top of your thumb. Pinch the cuff of the glove from below with your dominant hand and from above with your non-dominant hand and then feed it over your white cuff. Adjust the glove and sleeve using your other hand that is completely covered by your white gown cuff. Same thing goes for the other hand. Fingers are pointed towards you, thumb down, pinch on one side, and now you have a gloved hand to assist and manipulate the glove over the white cuff. Adjust your sleeve as necessary. You'll notice that your first pair of gloves are blue. These are known as the indicator glove and are used both for extra protection and to easily identify any tears in your glove should they arise. This glove will be a half size larger than your stated glove size. Your stated glove, which will be white and also a half size smaller than your indicator glove, can be put on like normal gloves now that you are sterile.
This is where you will have that nice snug fit. Now we're going to demonstrate the surgical dance or the spin. The circulator will be given the card. Notice the blue side is present for the sterile person. The white side is for the circulator. I hold on to the left tie and I turn. Notice I turn counterclockwise. She pulls away and I tie and then totally enclosed myself in the sterile gown. At this point, the scrub tech will either hold out your gown for you to put your arms through, or you will be responsible for donning it yourself. The gown is sterile, so touch only the inside of the sterile gown to put your arms through the sleeves, and slip the gown on, putting your hands only about halfway through the elastic cuffs. Kindly ask a non-sterile person in the operating room to tie the back of your gown, and now you're ready for gloves. Typically, the scrub nurse will assist you in gloving, starting with the right hand and then the left. You will see a small card attached to the front of your gown. Grab only the white top half of the card and hand that to someone in the operating room to assist you. Spin in a circle counterclockwise and after a full 360 degree spin, grab the gown out of the card and tie your gown in front of you. You are now officially considered scrubbed in. Now that you are, your hands may not leave the box, which is bounded by your shoulder superiorly, your axilla laterally, and your waist inferiorly. It is sometimes helpful to either keep your hands folded in front of you or to grab your gown in the front just to keep your hands occupied and remind yourself that your hands must stay in your sterile box. If they do leave, you will need to start all over again and rescrub, which is not the end of the world, but can be a pain. Now you are ready to fully explore the operating room. Enjoy. <laughs>